I kept having encounters at the bus stop or in the streets where people would preach to me. So that time I sort of became rebellious. So I developed like a standard answer to all these preachers, like people preaching at the bus stops, and they asked me like, oh, what do you think life is after death? Now they say we just cease to exist, lor, just to shut them down. Ah. And then I read up on like Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, and then I took some of their best lines, lah, and then I memorized them, and then I would just approach my Christian friends and then, you know, just debate with them and try to like challenge their beliefs. Lor. 大家好，我的名字是李静涵。高安伊斯兰沙耶，方格沙耶，吉涵。I am a Chinese Muslim revert.、Uh, I am 31 years this year. I converted to Islam in 2015.、Uh, now I am a proud mother of two little girls. When I was born, I wasn't born into a particularly religious family. My grandma, she practiced Buddhism, Taoism. Basically, we had an altar in our house and we prayed to Guan Yin Ma. So my parents, they weren't really religious. They would actually identify themselves as free thinkers. So we also went to the temple, so you know, in order to pray lah. And obviously, the things that I would pray for would be like grades related lah. So you know, I would kneel in front of the temple or in front of the big fat Buddha, and then just like,、uh, please give me good grades, give me good grades, please give my parents more money so that they can buy me more things and all that lah. I would say during primary school, my concept of religion would be that all religions are the same. At that time, I didn't know that like people had to choose religion. To me, there was like just one singular God, and then all of us just had different means of communicating with Him. That time, I kept having encounters at the bus stop lah or in the streets where people would preach to me, and I didn't really like that lah because I felt like it was very forced. So that time, I sort of became rebellious. So I developed like a standard answer to all these preachers, like people preaching at the bus stops, and they ask me like, "Oh, what do you think life is after death?" Then I just say, "We just cease to exist, lor, just to shut them down, ah." You know, uni is a place where we have like a safer space to debate all these things. So that was when I actually went to like those 80s forums, and then I read up on like Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, and then I took some of their best lines, lah, and then I was just. Approach my Christian friends and then debate with them and try to like challenge their beliefs. Or what I find interesting was that while I was being very aggressive, all my friends were very muted. They were very polite. Then they just laugh. Then they just say, "I don't know lah," but this is just my beliefs. Or so although I wasn't satisfied with their answers, I developed a respect for them. That sort of made me reflect a bit lah. You know, like I thought like I was like kind of being immature. When we first got together, he basically told me that first things first, I have to say that、uh, if we end up getting married,、uh, you would have to convert. Then I was like, huh, really, man? So backwards, huh, man? Like I cannot choose to choose my own religion. He would say, unfortunately for Islam, it's better lah、like, if we are of the same faith. So I thought, okay lah,、like, I don't know anything much about your religion. So let me ask you a few questions, ah. What statue do you pray to? Then he was like, oh, we don't have statues in our mosque. So I was like, huh, really serious? Like your mosque doesn't have any god or statue or idols or anything. He was like, no, 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 no. We pray to God only. So he was like, basically call our God Allah, and that is not a name lah. It just means the one and true God. So if you believe in a single Creator, that is God, and that like you know, click. Because you remember in primary school, I was saying that I believe that all of us believe in the same God, but we just had different means to it. And somehow when he said that, it sort of like you know, aligned. My parents were, you can consider them like very, very supportive lah. So my father was just very supportive. He was just like, I trust you, I love you. You go ahead lah, go and explore. But my mom was the one who was a bit more hesitant. But、um, for her, I could understand why lah. It was very difficult for her to accept that I was converting, because she was working in an environment where there were a lot of other aunties. So she actually kept my relationship secret. But you know, eventually when she had to say that I was seeing a Muslim,、mm, all the negative things came lah. If she didn't have the answer, she would ask me, or she would go online and read up so that she could like better defend me. And I was very touched by that. I actually converted just a few days before Ramadan. Basically, that meant that once I converted, the five daily prayers must start, and once I converted, the full fasting must start. But I realized that after you do it for like a few days, close to a week, your body actually get used to it, and it wasn't that difficult anymore. So for me, the harder part was maybe the prayer. Like contrary to what people think, Ramadan isn't just about fasting, ah, because Ramadan is a is a 
very spiritual month where we actually, you know, pull ourselves back from the worldly affairs and really focus on our relationship with our God. But during the night, we are actually advised to like, you know, wake up like 3 a.m. in the morning and to just stand in prayer for hours. Ah. So even after we break our fast at about 7 p.m., shortly after that, we have to like quickly finish up our meals. And then uh, for my husband's family, we would actually go to the mosque. So that was something that I didn't know when I converted. I thought, okay, la, Ramadan was just fasting. But then like my father-in-law, being a very wise man, he just advised me that, yeah, since this is the month where your rewards are multiplied, since this is the month where you aim to rebuild that connection with your God after you know, 11 months of you know, drifting away from your God, um, cherish this time. La. And over the years, I think this year will be my sixth year of Ramadan. Uh, definitely, I go into it with a very different perspective. Oh. I think that it is a very tremendous blessing uh, for Singapore to be the way it is with like, racial and religious harmony. And one last advice was an advice that my father gave me as well. He said that, you know, if you go into a religion, don't half-ass it. You know, don't go in and then say like, I'll just pick a few of the things that I like and then I'll just practice a few of the things that I like. Because that's the only way you can really benefit from it uh, and see the beauty in it. <laughs>